Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this part 2 I'm remaking some of the parts for the mounting of my DRO linear scale that I made in last week's video. On these two parts I made two errors while machining. The first one resulted in a small step along the long side. This small step is a result from me not measuring the thickness of the raw material before machining. Because I input the thickness of the material as 7mm in the program but the raw material that I used was 8mm wide. So the screw holes are offset by half a millimeter out of the center of the part. And the big step on the front was caused by me not zeroing the x-axis on my machine right. Because I went to touch off the side with the end mill but I didn't subtract half of the diameter of the end mill after I zeroed it. So it resulted in a step of half the diameter of the end mill. And after that I had to redesign the parts for the bracket. This time I actually made a 2D sketch in my CAD program for all the parts that are relevant for the bracket. Because the bracket that I made last week did not only have some manufacturing errors, but I also made some mistakes while measuring the position and calculating the pos position of some holes and slots because I just made some rough sketches on a piece of paper and that caused some errors and now that I made kit on the on the CAD program the calculating errors um, are gone. So now that I have designed the new parts I can disassemble the old bracket so I can salvage some of the parts to use as raw stock for the new bracket and I think I will be able to reuse the big part as the new small part by just cutting off the end of that part. Now we can go to the CNC and clean up the vise and put the first part in. I obviously always have to make sure that it's secured properly in the vise but I do not recommend you hitting the part with your hand, just use a like soft side hammer. And after zeroing the machine, I can now start the program. Here it first moves over to the tool length sensor, but because I don't use more than one tool in this tool path, I can just accept it and then press start and it will uh, start the program. And I actually zeroed the machine wrong again on this part but uh, I noticed it before because I instead of negative half of the mill diameter I did positive so it was just too far up and right where the position should actually be but uh, I noticed it um, when it did the third hole because it was in the in the corner of the part on the on the edge where it obviously should be. I'm sorry for the focus I'm recording these videos on my iPhone and it doesn't it doesn't work with the focus in, on parts like this it just it's hard to get it to focus at all and if it focuses it always focuses on something else so here it's now the, the right program where I zeroed it. I just went to the original position and then just said it's negative instead of the positive value. And you can see it's on further up and further um, to the right. So it's opposite from that what I just said, but you get the point. And on the second part I actually made a vital mistake because I thought that the zero point was in the material at that point but as you saw it's two millimeters further out. This means on the first pass the end mill just went right through two millimeter deep of material on this part. And it's a three millimeter end mill, eight millimeters deep. I don't know how it did not break. I did not record it. I'm very sorry for that, 
but I sh can show you the, the chips that came off this compared to the normal ones that I make. That showed me that I can put this machine through way more and also these end mills through way more than I have done until now. So it's very impressive. And now for the comparison, these are the normal chips that I get on this machine when I cut 8mm deep and 0.15 radial engagement and these are the chips that came off the machine because I accidentally milled 2mm deep with a 3mm end mill. I have no clue how the end mill didn't break. I, I still don't know. So now after I made the parts, they don't look pretty because of the errors and uh, there are also a lot of holes. It almost looks like Swiss cheese, this part, because I made so many errors, but it will work. I can put them together and then put them on on the on the lathe. And this time everything fit to together very well. So I can't complain even though I made some some mistakes. I could have never imagined that the end mill would be able to cut two millimeters deep. I I don't know how it is able to do that but I now for certain know that I can go deeper than I went before because I went like 0.15 millimeters deep and I can go two millimeters without anything breaking so if I go like 0.5 it will be totally fine and I have like improved my productivity four times so that's that's the thing I did take it off again after this and put some washers under the screws and then aligned the, the rail part of it with the axis of my lathe by using a dial indicator to make sure that it would uh, run parallel to the sensor so the sensor wouldn't get damaged or be inaccurate because the rail would move up or down over the travel distance. And then I put the cover on that I made from the, the like extrusion they give you so you can make install it I just use that and cut off uh, the lip it, that's on it and this was the video of this week thank you for watching if you liked it I would really appreciate a subscription or if you would like this video I hope I you have learned something new I for sure know that I have learned that these tiny end mills can take way more than you think. And thank you until next week.